So Konami has just dropped a new ban list for rush duels. Although maybe ban list isn't the right word because nothing is actually banned, but a lot more cards did get limited. So if we fire straight on in and have a look at what we've got. So the limit regulation of rush duel will be applied from the Saturday, the 1st of April, 2023. So we'll start with the ban cards, prohibited cards, none. That's a good thing, I think. The only cards I think that necessarily could do with a ban would be legends. So that just means nothing, none of the legends are hit, which I guess is fine because they can be frustrating to play against, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're bad for the game. We'll have to continue on. Anyway, if we look at the first card, so XQT Lilius, this is a pretty divisive card, or I guess this card specifically, maybe not, but the archetype XQT has been seen as kind of a tier zero deck for quite a long time. And it's made playing Rush feel a little bit... Uh, stale because you don't always want to be running into the exact same decks over and over and over. Now this is a problem that Rush has had for quite a long time. Uh, I guess I guess card games in general do tend to have this problem where when people work out what the best deck is they just play that and then if there are only one or two or three really really powerful decks and nothing else can really hold a candle to them people tend to gravitate towards those but XQT is kind of in a league of its own at the moment. And one of the big reasons for that is Lilius. Lilius is a bit of a pain in the ass card because it's 2500 attack that can be special summoned quite easily. So being able to have easy access to 2500 that you can keep bringing back from the graveyard over and over and over again without having to worry about tributing and getting all the other boosts that the XQT cards bring uh, feels a little bit weird. So XQT have ways to weaken all non-level 7s, which basically means that you can keep all the enemy monsters weaker whilst your 2500 gets to thrive and I think it would be a lot healthier if instead XQT started lower power level than all the rest of the decks and then kind of brought them down to its level but XQT Lilius kind of gets to break that so bringing it down to one I do think is quite good I think that's good for the game overall I don't think this necessarily kills XQTs but it does bring them down to the power level of maybe some other decks so the other card here, Barrier Statue of the Inferno. So Barrier Statues have always been rather contentious, even in regular TCG. The reason being that it's a floodgate effect that can stop your opponent from playing the game. Now, in the regular TCG, in Master Rule, it is a problem because you want to be trying to set up a big board or break your opponent's board all at once, and having to clear it and then go to main phase two and then use your main phase two to set up is not ideal. In Rush Duel, you don't have a main phase two. So if you have cards that can only be special summoned, you have to basically say, I can't do this till next turn, and it can get very frustrating. That paired with the fact that this is just a level four monster means you could play this at anything. You're not limited to only playing this in Pyro. There isn't really any cost or requirement to get this card out. It's just kind of normal summon it. And then when you're done with it, you can just tribute it off when you're trying to push for game. It's, it's just a really good, powerful floodgate. And I think it turns off too many decks. People want to be making their fusion plays. People want to be making their maximum plays. And having a card that basically says you're not allowed to do that, it does kind of suck for the format. So the only downside to this, I suppose, is this was one of the cards that was being used to counter XQTs. But if XQT is hit enough, then I don't think it matters too much that Barrier Statue is at one. The interesting question would be, are people still going to be running Barrier Statue as the one of? I think maybe. I think it's a lot easier to find room for just a one-off card. At the end of the day, you can just slap out a monster and tribute it without doing anything with it. So I think this could be just a fine one-off in just every deck, really. So moving on down, we have two cards that are on here for very similar reasons. So we have Dragon Roll the Sushi Fairy. This is on here because of a combo it has with Progress Potter to kind of filter through your deck and kind of just take a very long turn and be able to kind of filter through your deck and find all the cards you need. And Necromade Nana, I believe, is on here for a very similar reason. So there's not really much to say about this. It's clear Konami does not want that kind of style of gameplay. They don't want turns to take a very long time. They don't want you to be able to sift through your deck and find exactly what you're looking for. So I think they're just trying to kind of stop that before it gets going. Even if that deck might not be particularly liked or it might not be very popular it might not be even seeing a lot of topping results i still think it's good to keep it down if that's the kind of gameplay that konami really doesn't want us to be seeing so going down again well here we have thunderbolt still here i think this is fine i know a lot of people really like thunderbolt but i personally am not a big fan of it i think it it creates interesting deck building decisions being able to 
build your deck around having a bunch of different level sevens. I think that is a pretty cool idea in itself. The problem is, is if that deck of a mishmash of level sevens ends up being a lot better than the other cards around it, that's when it gets a bit problematic. I don't think Thunderbolt, if it was back to three, would suddenly be the best deck, but I think it would definitely be a good contender and it might make deck building a little bit stale again, but we'll have to see. And the other card we have here is Executee Scramble. It's a good spell card. It is a very good piece of the XQT engine. It basically lets you special summon a monster with 500 defense from your hand or graveyard, which is very, very powerful. That lets you keep flooding the board. And this, especially combined with Lilius, is a pain in the ass because you can use this to bring back Lilius from the graveyard if it gets sent there and just keep this 2500 or, you know, obviously it used to be multiple 2500s in rotation the entire time. And it was just a big kind of pain in the ass. This obviously lets you bring back the other executors as well, which have an answer to everything. You can bring back Flame and get to a ridiculous attack. You can bring back cards that weaken your opponents, cards that can pop back row, cards that can shuffle monsters back into the deck. There's just so much that this card enables that I think putting it down to one was probably the right decision. With these two hits, I don't know if that's enough to make XQT not a tier zero deck, but I don't think it's going to have killed the deck at the very least, which is good. We don't we don't want XQT gone. We just want it brought down to the same level as everything else. So hopefully these changes will help us get there. So next up, Secret Order. I am very happy this is still here. I really don't like the idea of Secret Order. The idea of just jamming a bunch of level 7 normal monsters and then just using this spell card to make them suddenly ridiculous, I don't think is particularly fun deck building or gameplay. I think it's some of the most boring rush games I've played is into Secret Order. I know it can be fun to just swarm the board with a bunch of guys, have them all gain load of attack, and have them all be immune to traps, but I don't know. I don't think Secret Order is it. I think especially if this was going to be a deck type, I would like to see it archetypical, right? I want to see a specific monster type that wants to swarm the board with normal monsters and not have it be generic so that everyone just wants to play whatever in whatever kind of deck. The other card here is interesting. Magical Stone Excavation is a weird one because primarily I've seen people running this at one. And even when I've played it in the past, I've only used a single copy of it. And the reason for that is that you don't really want to see multiples of this card. You don't really want to see a lot of this card. And a lot of the time, you're not going to have the right spells in the graveyard to use anyway. So I think having three copies of it is too many anyway. And the, the main card that I would always bring back with this is dark hole because i think dark hole is probably the strongest card in the format right now and basically just saying i have another dark hole is really good so i'm not super sure why this is on here there's probably some loop or something that i'm unaware of but the, i always saw this card as just this is my second copy of dark hole that requires me to discard two cards so i guess i'm not sad to see it here i don't think this is going to really change much but if there is some sort of degenerate looping strategy or something because maybe and it deserves to be here i remember cards like this were used in empty jar back in the day to just mill out your opponent in one turn so whenever i see a card like this i always get a little bit hesitant over it but it seems fine for me so i guess it's fine all right and then semi restricted progress potter so we spoke a little bit about this before so this is a an odd card so this card can be used again in this kind of loop and it lets the turns take a very long time. It can basically stall out the game and it can put you in a situation where you're kind of sifting through your deck to try and gain a lot of advantage and find exactly the cards that you're looking for. And I don't necessarily dislike that, but it's clear that Konami does. That's why they're trying to cut it off. They put this down to two, I would imagine, because Progress Potter does list itself uh, during its card text, which means if you only had one copy, you couldn't fulfill all of its optional conditions which is you get to draw cards equal to the number of progress potters and pot of avarice in your graveyard so i can understand them not wanting to put this to one but it's clear that someone messed up when they made this card because otherwise konami wouldn't be trying to hit it so hard with these limits but yeah that's it for the list it's it's an interesting one um i don't i think the only real problem that rush has had recently is that xqt's tier zero deck if you're if you're playing in a tournament and you're not playing execute you're not really playing to win you're playing to just kind of have fun to enjoy it so i do think this will probably i don't know if this is going to just kill execute or even bring them down in power maybe it will well i think we'll have to wait and see we'll have to see 
after April 1st, what kind of list people are playing. We'll have to see some tournament reports and see exactly where we're going with this. If this doesn't bring the deck down, obviously I think it's going to need more hits in the future, which could be pretty yikes. I suppose the only other thing to talk about is the cards that weren't hit. So I guess Dark Hole is probably the strongest card in Rush. I don't think it's inherently bad for the game just because I think Konami want Rush duels to be quick. I think they want them to be over in five to eight turns. I think they want us to be able to wipe the board and then commit a bunch of stuff, attack for game. And uh, although that's not my preferred style of gameplay, I personally like a lot of back and forth, a lot of interaction. I can see where they're coming from. Do I want Dark Hole Band? Probably yes, to be perfectly honest, because again, like I said, I like the slow, methodical, interactive gameplay, which you don't... I guess that in itself doesn't really gel with Rush duels, so I can see why. The other card, I guess, Mirror Force? Uh, I guess the same reasons. Well, Dark Hole, I suppose, also does have the benefit of... It's used by Zuijo in the anime and has some support cards for it. I think it has at least one or two support cards, a fusion monster at the very least, that lets you bring it back to your hand or something. So I can understand not wanting to hit that card specifically. Mirror Force is, is in a bit of a weird space on its own because there aren't that many legend traps. So if we start banning legend traps, there's going to be even less to pick from. Although right now, a lot of the time, it does feel like it's Mirror Force or nothing. I know that some people do use cards like Torrential Tribute, and that's generally to try and respond to summons because a lot of the time when a, your opponent summons a monster, they can then use its effect to pop back row. Things like Joint Tech Rex, things like uh, the Execute E, which I forget the name of, which can also destroy back row. But Torrential Tribute is a good answer to those kind of cards, but it can be a bit specific. I suppose the only other big one would be Execute Flame, which is a very, very powerful card, can get very, very big. I've seen, so, so you could make an argument that XQT Flame lets XQT deal with like fusion decks and lets them deal with maximum decks and those decks just get really, really big. But I guess my counter to that would be, do XQTs need that? Does that archetype need an out to absolutely everything? Because there's a lot of other archetypes in Rush that do not, that just straight up don't have removal or don't have access to good cards. So a lot of those decks, you basically have to use a lot of generic cards or just cards that don't really fit in with the archetype just to kind of make that work. And that's that's fine. Uh, I mean, that's that's what Yu-Gi-Oh's always been about. Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't have restrictions on deck building exactly so. You can choose just some of the best cards and jam them together. But Rush clearly tries to dissuade that by having a lot of cards that require you to be using the same type of monster in their deck. Think in Spellcaster decks, they have a lot of cards that say like, shuffle four Spellcasters back into your deck. Well, in order to try and fulfill that condition, you're gonna try and run more Spellcasters and less non-Spellcasters. And same with things like Joint Tech Rex, you want more machines in the deck because you need to shuffle three back. So if you have a lot of not machines in there, you might find yourself in a situation where you can't fulfill that effect. So I do think we probably are trying, or Konami is trying to funnel people into playing specific archetypes and types together. But I suppose that's just that. So yeah, opinions overall, I think pretty good. I'm quite happy with this list. I don't think it is too disruptive. I think it's trying to pull back the decks that are getting a bit too ridiculous in, that being XQE, and we're trying to stop kind of looping shenanigans. So I I think I'm fine with this. I think this is a good list overall. I'm looking forward to April and trying it out. Although saying that me and Alex, when we've played our character draft, haven't actually been doing much of it. So it might have to be just when I'm playing in tournaments or playing any other kind of games with anyone else. Ah, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next time.